Hello everyone. My name is Melissa Scher and I am the director of the Masters in Public Health program at St. Ambrose University. Today we wanted to provide more information about the science and epidemiology around social distancing. So today, March 17th, Tuesday, Professor Colleen Doak is going to give us more information around the infectious disease and social distancing science. As a nation, we are all currently practicing social dis distancing. Uh, in the last 24 hours, Iowa has confirmed 23 cases of COVID and Illinois has moved above the 100 mark. We have 105 cases of COVID-19 in 15 counties. Again, this data is from March 17th, Tuesday. Now I'd like to introduce Professor Colleen Doak. Dr. Doak in the next few slides is going to talk about the science, infectious disease science, and kind of unpack social distancing as a concept. Take it over, Dr. Doak. So the reason why this disease spread so quickly is that it has a relatively high reproductive rate. The reproductive rate of COVID-19 is two, and that means that for every person infected, they will go on to infect, on average, about two other people. And the range depends on social distancing practices. Secondly, the incubation period is relatively short. On average, it takes about five days between first exposure and first symptoms. It can take up to 14 days, which is the reason for the recommendation for self-isolation of 14 days. And then finally, the infectious period can last about 10 to 11 days after first symptoms. So studies show that people are contagious for that time frame, uh, a little bit less if the symptoms are mild and a little bit longer if the symptoms are more severe. However, many people don't show very serious symptoms and they may be missed. They may not get a clinical diagnosis. And we talk about them as being latent cases and the time frame it takes to get clinical diagnosis is the latent period. So that is typically going to be the same as the incubation period if there is clinical diagnosis with the initial symptoms. But the reality of COVID-19 is that very often there is no clinical diagnosis and people don't know to take protective measures because they don't realize that they have this condition. So here I'm going to put all of that information in a row in relation to a timeline. So you have the first patient, they get exposed to COVID-19. It's going to take on average about five days, can be as long as 14 days, for them to experience initial symptoms and to be infectious to somebody else. Now that second patient will also take about five days before they develop symptoms of clinical disease. And that transition from infectious period of the first patient to clinical disease in the second is what we call a serial interval of about two to 14 days reflecting the incubation period. And we talk about this transmission from the first to the second patient as generations. And so in the next graphic, I'm going to show you visually how this is spread from one generation to the next and the time frame that relates to how quickly this disease is spreading. So every person passes COVID-19 on to two more people. So what does that actually mean? So that means you have a first case who then passes COVID-19 on to two more and they pass COVID-19 on to two more people. So from that first case, over two generations, or on average 10 days, you will end up with six new cases. That's a really fast rate of disease, and that can be reduced with social distancing. I'm going to show how social distancing can slow the spread of COVID-19 by reducing the reproductive rate. Imagine in this scenario that half the people are protected due to social distancing. So here, I'm going to give the example of this one person does not get COVID-19 because although they might have gotten it, they washed their hands or they were self-isolating. And because of that, they didn't only protect themselves, they also protected the other people who would have gotten the COVID-19 if they had not been practicing social distancing measures. So in this scenario, instead of COVID-19 going on to infect six more people, it went on to infect three people. Now, if in every scenario, half of the people are practicing social distancing, that will mean instead of 
passing COVID-19 on to six people, it only spreads then to two people. Now that's a dramatic reduction in the rate of disease and that will help to slow the spread and allow the healthcare systems to keep up with the capacity needed. Thank you, Dr. Doak. We appreciate your knowledge and insight into this issue. We also wanted to share a very informative post um, from the Washington Post, uh, and they give a modeling of extensive social distancing and how it changes the curve. So we encourage you to click on this link, read the article, and look at the different modeling that they have done because it further uh, helps us understand why this is such an important intervention to pursue at this time in our nation. Next steps currently remain. The curve flat flattens due to our social distancing measures. Tests become more and more accessible throughout our country. Positive tests are then traced and then treated at local health systems and our health systems are not overwhelmed. I want to remind you all, us all, of a quote from one of our nation nation's founders, Benjamin Franklin, who had a public health perspective at the onset. One ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure, and that's what social distancing is right now. It's focused on prevention. Where to call if you have symptoms or if you need more information. There are two hotlines, one for Iowa and one for Illinois linked here. There's also University of Iowa has established um, numbers within the university's health systems. So these 2319 numbers also are for those of you to call if you think you are experiencing symptoms, they can help triage you into services. Um, please be safe everyone and don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.